A Boogie and Lil TJ are two artists from New York who have similar styles. Instead of teaming up and putting on for the city together, they've been beefing for years, and now it's rumored that A Boogie is linked to the shooter who almost killed Lil TJ. Let's get right into it. Lil TJ grew up with his mom and younger siblings on 183rd Street in the Bronx. He told Pitchfork he was the problem child of the family and started getting into fights and pulling off petty robberies when he was in middle school. TJ was always in and out of juvie for a couple months at a time, but when he was 15, he got locked up for a year in a youth detention center for a robbery. Getting locked up ended up being the best thing for him. TJ told Rolling Stone, it was not fun. It's not nothing that I would want to do again, but I learned a lot from it. I feel like if I wasn't to go to jail, I probably wouldn't be the person I am. I wouldn't, because I wouldn't have sat down and wrote those songs, and I never would have been able to focus on what I want to accomplish. So it's like it was actually a good thing for me. It made me open my eyes and stuff like that. He spent time in juvie before, but getting hit with a year-long sentence made TJ realize he needed to change up how he moved. He started writing lyrics while he sat down and then hit the studio when he got out. If he ain't have music to focus on, TJ would have gone right back to the streets. He told Pitchfork, I was trying to change, but I was stuck in my old habits. But all that changed when he hopped in the booth and recorded his breakout track, Resume. Before he went to an official studio, TJ recorded tracks on his phone where he was just straight up rapping. But he decided to switch things up in the booth and start singing his lyrics instead. It turned out to be a great decision because Resume blew up and TJ's career started popping off after just one track. He followed Resume up with a bunch of singles. And in 2018, he won first place in the Coast to Coast Live All Ages Edition, which led to him signing with Columbia Records. Later that same year, he dropped his first mixtape and was quickly becoming one of the hottest new artists in the city. All the success made him realize that music was a ticket to the top, and he ain't want to go back to his old ways. He told Rolling Stone, When I came out of jail, I saw a lot of my friends go into jail, stuff like that. Once I realized music was working, I was getting money off of shows, and I figured that I could find success through music. I realized it's no reason to just be on the block, doing illegal stuff. I see a lot of motivation that come from that. A lot of people look at me like, damn, it's a way out. 2019 was an even bigger year for TJ. He dropped his second mixtape, and the track FN became his first solo song to chart. Then in October of that year, he released his debut album, True To Myself, which peaked at number five on the Billboard 200 chart. When 2020 rolled around, TJ was ready to take things to the next level. But that's also when his beef with A Boogie was heating up. Fans compared Lil TJ to A Boogie ever since TJ came into the game and some people even called him a boogie clone. TJ just brushed it off, cause he thought he had his own lane, and there was never any real issues between the two of them. But that all changed in 2020. Like TJ, A Boogie also grew up in the Bronx. He started rapping at a young age and had a book of rhymes he carried around so he could spit for his friends. Even though he had a passion for music early on, it didn't keep him out of trouble. After a few run-ins with the law, A Boogie's parents sent him to Florida to try and keep him out of trouble. While in Florida, A Boogie was on house arrest finishing school. But just like TJ, being away helped him focus and go harder with music. He turned his apartment into a studio and got to work. After he finished school, A Boogie moved back to New York to try and make a real career out of rap. He linked up with his homies Don Q, QP, and Bubba, and together they started Highbridge the label, named after the Bronx neighborhood they grew up in. His first tape dropped in 2016 and it immediately put him on the map and scored him a feature in Forbes list of up and coming rappers. Later that year, he dropped a collab project with Don Q and then opened for Drake and Future on 3 of tour dates. That summer, he signed with Atlantic Records and got featured in the BET Hip Hop Awards Cypher. 2016 was a busy year for A Boogie, and in October, he dropped his project The Bigger Artist, which Rolling Stone listed as one of the best albums of the year. Within a year, A Boogie went from being unknown to being one of the hottest artists in the game, and in 2017, he kept it pushing and was featured on XXL's freshman class. Then, in September 2017, he dropped his debut album featuring huge artists like Chris Brown, 21 Savage, and Trey Song. His single Drowning with Kodak Black popped off and ended up reaching number 38 on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. A Boogie blew up by mixing auto-tune singing with gritty lyrics about the street life he experienced growing up, and Lil TJ was doing the same thing. Despite their similar styles and upbringing, TJ and A Boogie never linked up, and in 2020, it became clear that it would never happen. While promoting his upcoming project, State of Emergency, TJ took shots at A Boogie and 6 9 when he tweeted, All that other shit going on right now, irrelevant. Only thing I know is I'm shutting the streets down. From now on, I'm the king of NY. All that other na-na-na shit and snitch rainbow hair shit going on in my city, a dub. 
A Boogie's homie Don Q clapped back and said, Where did my mother? I'm not saving niggas no more. Next time you see niggas getting stripped out of everything, respectfully. I'm telling you now. TJ responded with, You can suck my f How about that? Yo, Don Q, yo, suck my d Slap this shit out you, you stupid and dumb. You f You f That is just real p then a boogie hopped into the beef and tweeted, I bet, keep on trying to sound like me without showing love and I'm gonna start to sue you. For real though, this shit is getting out of hand. I'm not trying to knock nobody hustle. I'm just getting sick of the craft you bring into the table, making this shit boring. TJ ain't back down and hit back with, be mad when it's the next nigga turn to shine. LOL, move out the way and watch me win. Lil TJ also posted a video showing off a high bridge label chain, which was allegedly snatched from one of the members. But according to A Boogie, the chain got snatched a while back and TJ was just clout chasing. He wrote on Instagram, one of the bros dropped slash lost his chain a long ass time ago while we dragged in and that's word the melody. He got the audacity to buy it off a random shoot a vid with it and front like he did something. Lost all my respect for you, shaking my head. Stay true to yourself. A video also surfaced of Don Q allegedly pressing TJ when they ran into each other at a studio. It looked like the beef was gonna keep escalating. But then TJ hopped on Instagram to apologize for going after everyone and said, Today's a new day, man. I'm chilling, man. I, I, ain't, I ain't trying to argue with nobody today. I ain't never gonna, I ain't gonna lie. Real shit, though, I swear. I'm going back to the old little TJ. I'm not arguing, bro. This is why I never like posting a lot, bro, because I can't control myself. Start getting out of hand and shit. You know what I mean? My fault for getting out of composure, y'all, man. May 8th, state of emergency, the mixtape dropping. You know what I'm saying? Like, be posting a track listing soon. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah. Shit, man, it's all about the music, man. F beef, that's not good. I don't encourage it. After that, the beef between TJ and A Boogie cooled off for a minute while they both focused on their careers. It looked like everyone moved on and just let it be. But recently, Lil TJ was the victim of a targeted shooting, and it's rumored that A Boogie might be involved. On June 22nd, Lil TJ got shot multiple times in Edgewater, New Jersey. He was sitting in the Dodge Durango with his homies, Jeffrey Valdez and Antoine Boyd, when a dude named Muhammad Kanate walked up with a pistol and demanded their jewelry. It's unclear what exactly happened after that, but TJ ended up getting shot several times, Boyd got hit once in the back, and Kanate also got shot a few times. According to witnesses, Kanate was dragged into a BMW and driven off, and surveillance cameras caught the BMW, dropping them off at a local hospital a few minutes later. TJ was rushed to the hospital in critical condition and looked like he wasn't gonna make it. But luckily, sources close to him have reported that he's stable and pulling through. Kanate was later arrested and charged with three counts of attempted murder, robbery, and weapons charges. TJ's homies got hit with possession of an unlawful weapon too, but they both got released. When the news first broke, police announced that they thought it was a targeted attack. And now fans think they found a connection between A Boogie and the shooting. According to some sources, Muhammad Kanate has been featured in several of A Boogie's music videos, but it ain't been confirmed if it's actually the same guy. But even if Kanate is affiliated with A Boogie, that don't mean A Boogie was involved with the hit on TJ. Neither of them has sent shots at each other since 2020, so it seems like a random time for A Boogie to try and take little TJ out. Luckily, it seems like he's on his way to recovering and will be back soon. A Boogie hasn't commented on the situation yet, but even if he not involved, him and TJ don't seem cool, so he probably wouldn't be sending out support anyways. This story's still developing, so make sure y'all tap in for updates.